G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, a couple of interesting stories here and things are happening in the market. You know, some might think it's good, some might think it's bad. And we'll get on to that. But let's look at this one first. So for all the Australian viewers out there, Crypto.com secures an Australian financial service license. So, you know, the price of... Uh, MCO or CRO, I forget which one is left, one disappeared. I think it's uh, MCO that's left over. No, it's CRO. CRO is the coin that's left over. Uh, has been going down for a long time and I thought they were in trouble, but it seems like they're still doing business, uh, which is good. I don't want them to fail. I was just worried for them. But let's have a bit of a read. The mandatory license will allow Crypto.com to issue crypto debit cards in Australia. So great for all the Australian viewers and people. Crypto exchange and debit card provider Crypto.com has completed the acquisition of an Australian financial services company in order to secure an Australian financial services license or ASFL. The acquired firm named the card group PTY Limited has been described as specialising in prepaid card, mobile and wearable solutions for enhancing cardholders' engagement. Crucially, the firm was already approved by Australia's Foreign Investment Review Board, paving the way for Crypto.com's ACFFL. ACFL. With, ACF, with ASFL, sorry, I keep saying AC, ASFL under its belt, Crypto.com will be, will be licensed to legally pursue its priority card in Australia, proprietary card, can't even read at the moment, <laughs> and to establish direct relationships with domestic consumers along with actors in the wider Australian financial services system. Crypto.com, which operates an app, an exchange and a DeFi wallet, as well as a Visa card, has already made some first steps towards establishing an Australian user base. It recently enabled Australian dollar transfers in and out of its platform via NNP or Pay ID or BPay for user bank accounts. So this is pretty good news. And obviously, you know, even though the price of CRO had been coming down for quite some time, uh, it seems like they're, they're not dead yet. Uh, and, you know, hopefully this means they're going to go on to bigger and better things. So that's really good. Now, also speaking of cards, Visa and BlockFi to launch Bitcoin rewards credit card as adoption grows. The new credit card will offer Bitcoin re rewards rather than airline miles or cash. So before you could get cash back and, you know, some uh, points for, you know, getting on planes and things like that. Now you're not spending uh, cryptocurrencies, you're spending cash but they are rewarding you with Bitcoin. So again, they're gonna to have to buy that Bitcoin from somewhere. Visa and BlockFi are teaming up to launch a new credit card that rewards users with Bitcoin, settling, uh, set, setting the stage for wider mainstream adoption of digital currency. It is happening, ladies and gentlemen, and it's happening right in front of everyone's eyes. They just don't know it, except for the people who are here, they understand. BlockFi, a New York-based startup specializing in crypto-backed loans and savings accounts, announced the partnership on Tuesday. As Bloomberg, as Bloomberg reported, the new credit card will reward purchases with Bitcoin rather than airline miles or other cashback rewards. Card, card holders will be eligible to receive 1.5% of their purchases back in BTC. Look, 1.5% of whatever you're spending isn't a lot, but if you let that sit there for 10 years... I think it's probably going to add up, especially if you're using your credit card a lot. This is something I'm definitely going to look into. The card, which carries a $200 annual fee, now that uh, is a, a bit steep, but anyway, you know, if you use your credit card a lot, then you'll rack these up and be able to get that back fairly quickly. Some one would hope anyway. Will be issued by Evolve Bank and Trust. Although the credit card will be available to the general public in early 2021, BlockFi account holders will be able to sign up beforehand. So you have to be a, have a BlockFi account to be able to get this credit card. You can't just run out and grab it. And I think it's only starting in America at first. It's going to take a while to get around the rest of the world. So still really, really good news. But, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to happen. But that's all right. Rome wasn't built in a day and nothing good generally happens in a day. It takes a while. All right. Another interesting story here. I have changed my mind. A top market strategist and longtime crypto skeptic explains why he now believes Bitcoin should be in investors' portfolios. 
All right, after declaring in 2018 that Bitcoin has no place in investment portfolios, Bernstein Research's co-head of portfolio strategy told clients on Monday that he has changed his mind. Uh, Inigo Fraser Jenkins said that the policy environment, debt levels and diversification options for investors have changed since the pandemic and made Bitcoin more attractive. The strategist also said that Bitcoin's volatility has dropped significantly in the last three years. He recommended a number of portfolio strategies that involve a small allocation to Bitcoin alongside stocks and US treasuries. Uh, stocks, you know, I'm concerned about them and they're propped up by you know, stimulus, but look, so is some of the crypto. That's just a fact. You know, if the stimulus suddenly stops and there's a big downturn, crypto won't, uh, you know, come out of it unscathed. Uh, you know, it may do really well in it, but it'll likely just go down with everything else. But it's good news that people are slowly but surely, you know, changing their tune. So this is someone who was saying, you know, just back in 2018, it's got no place in anyone's investment portfolios. Two years later, he's saying everyone should have a little bit. And if, you know, again, the big hedge funds and sort of soon pension funds and just the everyday Joe comes along and decides, I need some Bitcoin. Basically, I, you know, most people around the world suddenly need some Bitcoin. The price is going to skyrocket. There's, yeah, unbelievable upside to it. I don't know exactly how high it could go, but I've got me some just to see what happens. I've got my stash and, you know, we'll wait and see. Hopefully I'm right. All right, and something similar. So now, Pomp Talks, uh, Pomp Talks Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary into buying a little more Bitcoin. Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary said he was not against Bitcoin, but would invest far more into the crypto af asset if it were backed by regulators. It is regulated now. Uh, maybe not, you know, 100% fully regulated, but it's not far off, it's happening. Canadian businessman Kevin O'Leary, who appears on the reality TV show Shark Tank, has seemingly softened his stance on Bitcoin after speaking with Anthony Pomp. In an episode the Pompcast released today, Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary appeared to be moving past his statements last year where he declared that Bitcoin was not a real currency, although he still expressed concerns about the crypto assets volatility. That is just because we're not used to it. If you don't understand, well, it's not so much understand volatility, but if you don't like it, then you're going to hate the lows. That's really going to crush you. But then you don't deserve the highs. You know, you can't have things 10xing and 100xing and 1000xing if you can't hack the fact if you can't hack the fact that they might retrace. You know, 70, 80, 90 percent at some stage. You can't have just all upside and no downside. That doesn't work. That's a flawed and dangerous system. But look. The businessman said that he already owns some BTC and he might consider investing a little bit more of his $400 million net worth in the cryptocurrency. So there we go. Again, minds are changing. Perceptions are changing. People are coming across. It is happening. You are early. You know, the again, mainstream hasn't even adopted yet. This is still the very early stages of mainstream. Not even mainstream. It's still just the early stages. It's not until crypto is in you, you know, your local bank, they're holding it for you and dealing with it. And again, you know, PayPal is slowly but surely bringing it in, but it's only American users and it's only the early ones who understand it and know about it. It has such a long way to go when this really does get rolled out to the entire world and crypto is available to everyone and easily available. I shudder to think what the prices might be of some of the coins that we have now. So if you're in now and you find some good projects, hold, you know, not financial advice again, this is just my personal opinion, but, you know, hold on to them. You know, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, at least in my eyes. And look, I like Ripple. Other people hate it. I think it's a good investment. I think Stellar's going to have a part. You know, I really like some of the DeFi plays. I like Aave. I like Ren. I like Synthetics Network, I like Carver, you know, there's a number of coins out there. You've got to go out and do your own research, but I think there's going to be massive gains to be made in those in the years to come. You know, not just this bull run, in literally years to come. All right, let's go over here and have a look. We'll refresh, 571, so it's obviously come down a little bit. All right, it's jumped back up a little bit. All right, so we got... Up to around 19,800, I think we dipped down to 18,000, sort of 700, uh, and now it's moving its way back up. But it's just kind of rocky. Gas prices eh, could be better. 
Bitcoin dominance just still sitting around that 61%. All right, any big movers? Yep, sushi. God, this thing just continues to go. But there is news that Y Finance are about to take it in. They're going to basically buy it up and it's going to become part of Y uh, Yearn Finance. So again, really good news for anyone who got into this a while ago. Really cheap prices. Aave, uh, I picked this you know, a little while ago. I thought it was going to continue to go up. We can have a look at the charts here. And again, I said that it had broke out. It looked like it was a fake out. Come back up. Looked like it really was a fake out, like we were going to sort of double bottom, but the lows were getting a little bit higher. Then we had this short time frame. This was on the minutes, and I said, I think this is going to break out and move upwards, and that's exactly what it did. So I'm happy with that pick. Uh, Kasama, you know, nothing too crazy except for really sushi, uh, you know, with the 21% in uh, 24 hours. I think a lot of this has got to do with the Yen Finance news. Synthetics Network continues to climb up. It's just doing it ever so slowly. It's not really racing at the moment. So again, I picked this a while ago. I said it was somewhere around about here. I said, look, I think this is going to go up. It did. It was a bit of a fake out, rolled over, but it set a new higher low though. This low is about here. And then these lows are here. Yes, like it wicked down here, but that was for a very brief second. Sometimes it's better to not include the wicks, but look, you, you can. I'm not saying never count them, but they really are, you know, they're not the best indicator. This is a higher low, and now it is breaking out of this downtrend. So is this now about to do something like this and we just get a big massive pump? We're gonna have to wait and see. All right, what about losers? Yes, Horizon unfortunately, uh, but it's still up 7.5% uh, in seven days, so not too bad. Nano, Algorand, that's a shame. Algorand had done so well, but you know it, it is what it is. Same with Stella, it's down 4% over the last seven days, but again, it had a massive pump. It was up 100 and something percent for a while. Ren, this one hurt me. So we can have a look at Ren. I thought I was gonna get this trade right, and look, I still might be right, but we're looking dangerous at the moment. So I said it was bouncing along this white line here, and this was the trend line. It kept bouncing off this, but we can see that it has dipped below. So this is a shame, this might uh, roll over, but look, what we can do is we can take this trend line here, we'll get rid of this. Now what we can do is we gotta get another trend line, and we'll start here, and we can use this. Is this going to hold? Has it found its spot? Let's just move this over here. All right, so as we can see, well, we can move this up just a little bit. Oh, sorry, that's got to stay there. All right, let's grab this. And we've got to get it to cut that wick. All right, so here we go. This might be the new trend line. Look, it might not be. This might get uh, reversed as well. But it has bounced off here. It has kind of bounced off here. And now it is just teetering on the edge, trying to work out what it's going to do. So again, this was a bit of indecision when we get these kind of what we call spinning top candles. The market's not sure what they're going to do. And at the moment, this market uh, is unsure. Look, I'm really hoping it you know, goes to the upside. But, you know, if it doesn't, it goes to the low side and breaks down and we've got to set a new trend line, then such is life. What can you do? You can't pick them all. All right, so we've had a look at those. Link. Let's have a look at Link. This is one I picked uh, the other day and I said, look at this pattern. This was the long-term trend. It's been going up and up and every time it touches this green line or generally gets pretty close to it, it has a parabolic move. And so we have been coming back and we're coiling, coiling. This here is the price that, you know, uh, it's kind of found some support off. And we can see it nearly touched here, bounced, touched here, bounced. You know, it wicked below. And again, so it didn't really touch here. It wicked below, bounced. And we can see this is getting ever so tight, ever so tight. And is it going to find support off this red line or is it going to kind of travel along here, maybe bounce up a little bit and come down until we actually touch this green line? before we rock it higher? Or is it unfortunately gonna be like Ren and maybe break this trend line uh, and we have to you know, put in a new trend line? Time will tell. All right, last but not least, I'll wrap this up. The big daddy, the granddaddy, as we can see, 
it actually got up above that 19,000 sort of 800 700 dollar level but then it came down pretty quickly and now it's ranging but again it's setting higher lows we just got to wait and see with this uh, sort of close uh, whether it closes higher or if it maybe even comes down and closes lower there definitely is some sell pressure here at the moment again anyone who ever bought Bitcoin around you know twenty thousand dollars and there wouldn't have been too many people because it was only there for a very brief moment back in 2017 I'm not sure if it was even 24 hours you know they're probably selling now because they've waited three years and they've just had enough also people who bought Bitcoin at maybe four thousand dollars and there were people who bought it at four thousand earlier this year at this price they've basically 5x their money so they're probably happy to sell some Bitcoin but that's only gonna last for so long again you know I'm sure there's still a number of institutions buying Sky Ridge we're getting in whether they are buying it now or not who knows you know again Visa's gonna to start to buy more because they're teaming up with BlockFi and bringing out their card and cash app and PayPal and all the rest of it I think the upside uh, is massive but that doesn't mean we can't have any more downside all right that's it from me hit the like button down below hit the subscribe button I put out daily content I like to bring you with the news uh, and information I think is relevant uh, and having looking having a look at the charts again for me the trend is your friend if the trend is things are going up I invest if the trend is things are going down uh, then I'm going to simply hold or you know sell out depending where I think it is in the cycle if I really think it is the end of the bull market then I'm going to start to sell take my profits hold on to that invest it in other things and wait for the next cycle low that's my plan all right stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that gain train there were some gains there I'll see you next time